Okay, it is 9.32 and I will call this uh, meeting of the Sacramento Regional County Sanitation District and Sacramento Area Sewer District to order. And I would ask the clerk to call the roll to establish a quorum. Member Bruins? Present. Member Harris? Here. Frost? Here. Hume? Lolo'i? Singh Allen? Here. Sander? Natoli? Here. Orozco? Here. Howell? Here. Serna? Here. Valenzuela? Here. Bang? Here. Schneer? Viegas? Here. And Chairperson Desmond? Here. And you have a quorum. Great. I'd ask the uh, directors to please join me and stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you, Madam Clerk. Please read the um, cable announcement and opening statements. This meeting of the Sacramento Regional County Sanitation District and Sacramento Area Sewer District is being broadcast live on Metro Cable 14, the local go government affairs channel on the Comcast Consolidated Communications and AT&T U-verse cable systems. This meeting is closed captioned and live streamed at metro14live.sacccounty.gov. Today's meeting will replay on Sunday, April 17th at 3 p.m. on channel 14. This meeting can also be viewed at youtube.com slash metrocable14. In accordance with government code 54952.3, compensation for meeting of these legislative bodies is required to be verbally disclosed. The amount of $100 will be paid for each member participating today as a member of the Sacramento, Sacramento Regional County Sanitation District, and the amount of $100 will be paid for each board member participating today as a member of the Sacramento Area Sewer District. Compensation for Sacramento County Supervisors and City of Sacramento Council members is paid to the county and city respectively to partially offset the costs of those governments. Compensation for other board members is delivered to the individuals. The county fosters public engagement during the meeting and encourages public participation, civility, and use of courteous language. The county does not condone the use of profanity, vulgar language, gestures, or other inappropriate behavior, including personal attacks or threats directed towards any meeting participant. In compliance with directives of the county, state, and Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the meeting is open to, the pub to public attendance pursuant to health and safety guidelines. The practice of social distancing and wearing a face coverings, mask, or shield is recommended for the health and safety of all persons participating in person during the meeting, although it is not required. To make a public comment, please complete a speaker request form and hand it to the clerk. The chairperson will call your name when it is your turn to make a comment. You may also send a written comment to board clerk at sacccounty.net and your comment will be routed to the board and filed in the record. And that concludes the statement. Great, thank you, Madam Clerk. And now we'll move on to our uh, regional county sanitation district consent item, um, matter, or item number one. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call the item. Um, this is contract to approve the selection of an agreement with Moniz Architecture to provide engineering architectural services for the I-E locker room expansion and fitness center project. Okay, and I'll ask my uh, fellow directors if there's any comments or questions about this item. I'll move consent. Okay, it sounds like we have a... Set a motion by mem uh, Director Howell. It's seconded by the barking dog. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, him too. <laughs> okay, I, sec I second it. Totally second it. Thank you. <laughs> we'll keep that in mind if we need a quorum in the future. <laughs> um, okay, uh, so we have a motion and a second. Uh, are there any public comments on this item? There are no public comments, and I do not see any members with their hands raised. Okay, then I will close the uh, uh, we'll close the public comments, and we have a, a motion and a second. Please uh, call the vote. Member Bruins. Aye. Harris? Aye. Frost? Aye. Kennedy? Lolo'i? Singh Allen? Aye. Sander? Natoli? Aye. Orozco? Aye. Howell? Aye. Serna? Aye. Valenzuela? Yes. Bang? Yes. 
Villegas? Aye. Desmond? Aye. And the motion carries with those members present. Great, thank you. Uh, and number two for regional SAN is uh, uh, off agenda comments. Do we have any public comments for items not on the agenda? We do not have anyone signed up to speak for off agenda comments. Okay, great. All right, so moving along to uh, regional sanitation district and the Sacramento area sewer district uh, matters. We have uh, two consent items. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call those. Um, um, item number three, you're acting as both the Sacramento Regional Sanitation District and Sacramento Area Sewer District. Um, number three is to a contract to authorize the district engineer to execute the wastewater service contract and operating agreement between the Sacramento Regional County Sanitation District, the Sacramento Area Sewer District, and the Housing Authority of the County of San Joaquin. And the other is to author is an authorization for continuation of remote teleconference meetings. Okay, any, any comments or questions from uh, the directors on either items uh, three or four? I will move that without concurrence from the dog. Actually, uh, Chair, I do have a question. Okay, Director Harris. So I'd just like to ask staff what this means to our capacity for treatment. If we, uh, and, and what are the mechanics of getting sewage from Thornton to the treatment plant? So um, first of all, the capacity, it's, it's a tiny, tiny drop on the bucket, insignificant to the treatment plant capacity. Um, the pipeline capacity, it, it's smaller because to kind of to get to your second question, there's a force main that, that takes uh, the wastewater from Cortland to Walnut Grove, and it actually had to uh, veer into San Joaquin County a little bit. And there's a booster pump station not too far from Thornton. So they're, they're building uh, some piping to get it to, to that uh, booster station. But um, that, that's the sort of the mechanics of getting it there. Um, there is limited capacity in that pipeline and that's why there's a limitation in the contract on how much capacity they have. I see. Thank you, Christoph. That, that clears up my questions. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, is that Chair, uh, Director Natoli? Yeah, I just just by way of a little bit of background, when we did uh, when we closed the Walnut Grove and, and Thornton uh, individual sewer plants, and we had to run the, the line um, <clears throat> across uh, easterly across our county, then and then snake its way through Thornton up along uh, Franklin Boulevard. Um, that was part of the agreement with San Joaquin. I, I was involved at the time with uh, the <clears throat> then supervisors. Um, Supervisor represented the district and with the county folks. It's an unincorporated area community, very small community on the just immediately uh, uh, east of I-5. But that was part of the agreement that if they, uh, you know, allowed us to move through their county um, and, as Christoph said, the pump station uh, just north of the of the town of Thornton. But it was part of the, the negotiated agreement that, um, again, with limited capacity and. Uh, uh, I trust that they're probably running the same thing we are with some of our legacy communities, the Delta, and that is obviously on septic systems, they have, you know, small populations, um, but, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> some housing uh, developments that um, I trust are probably in need of sewer connections. So I just wanted to provide that background. Thanks. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Don. Yeah, thank uh, that, you. That, that's helpful. I appreciate that. I, and I also, you know, appreciate the staff report, I think probably several of us had the question, you know, how, how does this work because it's outside our, our jurisdiction and right. you explain that in the staff report, this, the exemption we have from uh, LAFCO in this, in this situation. So, um, okay. Any other comments from, uh, or questions from directors? Do you see any? I do not see any hands raised. Okay. Do we have any public comment on items three or four? We do not have any public comment. Okay, well, uh, no further discussion. We have a, a first and a second, I believe. Um, clerk, please uh, call the vote. I'm sorry, who called the first and the second? I didn't hear that. How Howell moved it. I don't know if there was a second, though. So Director Howell moved it. We uh, chair will second. Thank you. Member Bruins? Aye. Member Harris? Aye. Frost? Aye. Kennedy? Lolo'i, Singh Allen? Aye. Sander? Aye. Natoli? Aye. Orozco? Aye. Howell? Yes. Serna? Aye. Valenzuela? 
Yes. Bang. Yes. Villegas? And Desmond? Aye. And the motion carries with those members present. Okay. Thank you. So moving on to the district's uh, uh, separate matters, <laughs> item five, the um, uh, director's comments and district engineer matters. I'll turn it over to you, Christoph. All right. Just a couple of things. First of all, just the uh, upcoming board meetings. We do have both meetings in April. So April 27th will be our next board meeting. And then uh, it's getting to be a little bit of a busy season. So we're going to have both of the meetings in May as well. Um, we have some separate items and we also have our budgets coming for both districts. So that's why we're going to need the, the uh, May meetings as well. Um, so uh, that's it on the meetings. And then, well, I guess related to meetings, we have the, um, the remote teleconference item that, we, that, we, uh, that your board just approved. Um, we are currently in this hybrid mode, and I would love to see um, as many board members as we can down here, but I uh, completely understand the, the current situation, and having a 17-member board is hard to even fit everyone on that uh, dais. So um, that, is, that is the challenge, and then we're kind of working towards trying to get more members down here. But in the meantime, we're planning for the, uh, at least the midterm, short term, to be uh, in this hybrid mode. And, and thank you, Christoph. I'll, I'll just chime in there as well. Um, yes, we, we do have, uh, I think, a, a lot of space here where if some additional directors would like to come and we can still uh, um, spread out, I think that would be terrific. I, I agree with you. It is nice to see folks in, 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 um, in person, and it would be nice to see someone other than just Director Villegas up here with me, you know, all, as, as much as I like him. Um, so I would encourage that, and, and I checked with our um, um, clerk staff to ensure that would not be a challenge for them, and if, if the meeting is here in the board chambers, uh, I'm told that it's 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 not a problem to do the the hybrid model. So, I uh, would just ask that if members are going to be in person for any meetings, to please let uh, um, Madam Clerk know in advance so we can be prepared for you. Okay, Christoph, anything else? That's it. Okay, any comments or mis miscellaneous comments or, or questions from any of the directors? Yes, uh, Director Vegas. Uh, actually, I do. I was wondering, uh, and I think uh, this individual has maybe made the rounds, talked to many of the board members, but I, I wondered if staff, if we could ask staff to um, address either in writing or maybe verbally uh, the notion of what can be done or what can't be done relative to the rate and fee structure that we have given the increase in the number of tiny homes that are being built. Um, I know there are individuals that are trying to figure out how to be good stewards of our precious resources by living, you know, a more, little more modestly. And so I know there's a lot of work that's gone into our rate and fee structure. I know that's very difficult to sort of try to untangle. Um, we, we, many of us were part of that conversation many years ago. But I just wondered if there's something that I could share with the public because I'm being asked. I know they, this individual is representing many individuals who are considering doing the tiny home on lots that are um, where normally they would be charged, you know, the fees that are assessed for traditional single family homes. Um, and so I don't know what the answer is, but I, I would at least like to put that on the radar so that we can provide an answer to individuals that are continuing to ask that question. So there's, there's several, several issues with what the tiny home concept and how, how it, at least as far as trying to fit it into our structure that we have. Um, one of the issues is that if you, if you give some kind of a discount, usually you have to have a justification for that, and it requires some kind of study. It's very challenging to study because we don't have very many of them. Um, and, and I don't know, maybe there are some studies out there that we could lean on, but uh, you would assume that you would get less sewage from a, a tiny home. Um, but you know, our, our approach our current approach for residential is a postage stamp kind of approach. So whether your house is small or large, you end up paying the same amount. Um, but with study information that showed that there was um, less flow that could have a small de uh, result and a small decrease, we could, we could introduce a, an ordinance amendment to, to have a separate category. Um, one, so in related to that issue is that um, the amount of sewage that is generated by a home is not the only driver in the cost. And so there's a lot of fixed costs that don't change. So again, it may have a small 
reduction, um, but, but uh, I would be surprised if it would have a large reduction. Um, the other, perhaps other issue is um, that you, you don't, you'd have to have a way to control that that, that property remained as a tiny home and wasn't, you didn't put a larger house on there later on. Um, that would have to trigger a, you know, a reassessment of the fees. That would be another issue to consider. But, so those are some of the issues. Um, again, if, if, if there was a, the will from the board to have staff go and, and try and study that, that would, would be the next step. Uh, again, I don't know. We could at least do some looking around and see if there are some wastewater studies out there on the tiny homes uh, um, that have an that can give you an idea of how much wastewater they're generating. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I'm not sure. looking to try to redirect resources. I'm, I mean, if there's something that's readily available, I don't want to try to reinvent any wheels here. But if there's something that we can at least point to to say whether or not it makes sense at this juncture or maybe some point in the future. But I just, I, I would imagine it's going to continue to grow. Yeah. So anyhow. No, that, that's great. I, I, I agree with director. Thank you for raising that. That's actually, uh, yep. you know, we, we need to leave no stone unturned in terms of looking at ways we could possibly attract more, uh, you know, housing solutions like that. And if it results in, in any kind of um, um, decrease in, in, expenses, then I'd certainly like to see if maybe there is something on the shelf that other districts have looked at, maybe, uh, Christoph. I, th I think I'd have a lot of interest in that. So I think we could. Sure. Oh, uh, Director Natoli? Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't cut Christoph off. I just wanted to say that that uh, the, <clears throat> at least one party has visited with me. Um, she <clears throat> thought in mean, my role as chair of the Board of Supervisors that I had some additional input, but I obviously explained to her, and I know staff talked with her, Christoph and others, I think, spoke with her, but I would concur with what you, just what you were saying, and, and I know, and Christoph, you know, I talked about this just a little bit, is that we had a senior project uh, out in the north area, uh, in, you know, I think maybe in the city cycle, it might have been the unincorporated area, where they actually did that. They did a specific study for that development that complex in, in order to reduce the connection fee i think to, to half of what it would have been at the time and i could be wrong about the detail but and you know we required that study and so forth but i think there's a way that you can you know certainly flag a lot uh, if, it, if it's permitted for a small house whatever jurisdiction it's in and that in the event in the future i mean some you know coordination obviously so that you know you don't you know, benefit some ratepayer to the detriment of, you know, all the rest. But I think there's a way to potentially do this. And I know, again, staff has been creative in the past. Uh, and, you know, we obviously have some detail. I think we still have that one report. It may not be applicable here because that may be a, a very different situation in the sense that that was going to be for all time, I guess, a uh, age restricted community and, and, and such. But I think similar arguments were presented at the time, and I know that you know we had to work through those issues. So I don't know, Chris. I'm obviously going to say you may want to respond to that. I, it would seem to me we could do other jurisdictions. I'm sure come into grips with this as well. So, and just to just to add to Don's point about that, I remember that conversation, and I shoot, I want to say that might have been 15 years ago that we had that discussion, and at the time we were talking about the fact that you know apparently there is data out there that seniors uh, generate significantly less wastewater than conventional single family homes. Mm -hmm. And I, I made reference to a number of jurisdictions in Southern California, San Diego is coming to mind immediately. So you might wanna contact some of those agencies and what they had done, they, they'd actually done some, some surveys about it and they tied it, if I remember correctly, the wastewater fees were actually tied to the water usage because the water usage was also significantly less. But mm -hmm. given the number of water agencies that we have within the district service area, that could be cumbersome. Yes, and, and again, water use is only part of the of the overall equation. But what I think what we could do first is just to do the desktop type study and and let's look around and see if there's what what information is out there. I don't think we've we've looked that far yet. Great, great, and maybe we'll we'll, we'll uh, agendize that for a future date to to come back and discuss it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There could be some information out there, but it it could be that could be kind of opening a can of worms. 
Okay, thank you, Director Howell, and, and uh, the other comments, and uh, Director Viegas. Mr. Chair? Uh, yeah, is that Director Sander? Yes, it is. Yes, go ahead. Uh, just a quick comment. You know, I've heard for years a problem that our park district has with regard to installation of water fountains at public parks, that there's a, a large fee charged by uh, the sewer connection, essentially, that bars them from, from putting water fountains in parks. Um, that could have a direct relationship to the previous discussion of tiny homes as well. If you're trying to provide water at some location and there's um, what they tell me is there's a $75,000 fee, but um, for a new connection. So I just wanted to throw that in with the, uh, if the, in the rest in the sense that it might have a similar impact. We can look into that a little bit, but I'm, I'm certain that the fee, even, even a full residential home is not, anywhere near $75,000. So we'll, we can get you some information. Um, if there is something that we can address with um, parks, because I know sometimes that's an issue, you got like a single bathroom, um, you know, we can look at that. But I, I, I'd have to look back at the ordinance too and see um, if we have any special consideration for parks. Okay. But let us research and get back to you on that, Director Sander. Thank you. Thank you, Director Sander. Okay, any other comments or questions from uh, directors? I don't see any on the, my list here. Alma, do you see any hands raised? I do not see any additional hands raised. Okay, and any public comment on this item? We do not have any public comments. All right, all right, let's move on to uh, item number six, uh, consent matter for the Sacramento Area Sewer District, Madam Clerk. This is the final contract acceptance for the Capitola pump station. All right, any comments or questions from directors on this uh, consent matter? I don't see any. I don't and see any hands raised and we do not have any public comments. Okay, no public comments either. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. <laughs> Director Sanders seconded by Director Natoli. Please call the vote. Member Bruins. Aye. Member Hume. Member Natoli? Aye. Member Howell? Yes. Serna? Aye. Vang? Yes. Sander? Aye. Frost? Aye. And Desmond? Aye. And the motion carries with those members present. Okay, and then we'll move on to our final matter, which is a uh, sewer district separate matter, item seven. Uh, Madam Clerk? Item number seven is your, we are introducing a proposed sewer impact fee increases and amendments to the Sacramento Area Sewer District Sewer Ordinance and continuing the ordinance to April 27, 2022 for adoption. Okay, I will turn it over for the presentation. So just a, a couple of quick comments before um, Dave Achanacek will be uh, making the presentation today. I just wanted to give you a little bit of background. Uh, so this is an ordinance change <laughs> proposed, which would uh, create an increase in the impact fees for SASD. And just to get some, uh, kind of get your bearings on impact fees, those are one-time fees paid by developers to build, in the case of SASD, they build our trunk facilities, which are medium-sized pipelines and pump stations. And this is essentially a way to share the costs evenly over the, um, the various developers, um, because these are usually put in by larger developments, larger developers, because they serve more than one uh, development. So this spreads out the costs evenly. The interesting thing about the SASD program, it's a somewhat unique, I think, is that it's a pass-through program. So we collect those fees that come in, they're set in a separate bucket, and then um, we use them to reimburse the developers. So developers build trunk projects, they get reimbursement agreements, and then we pay those, those funds that are coming in as fees, we pay them out to the developers. So um, essentially the risk is on the development, not on the district. We only pay when the fees come in. So with that kind of background, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Dave. Thank you, Christoph. Thank you, Christoph. Uh, good morning, Chair, members of the board. I'm Dave Ochnacek from Policy and Planning. Christoph was mentioning uh, some fee structures that's associated with the expansion areas. And there's also a relief area, and we'll talk about those, both of those as we go forward here. 
Just a few slides. Uh, we'll talk about the basis for the impact fee, uh, the reef relief and expansion area information that'll include the fee structures that we're proposing. Uh, some of the outreach that we did, uh, the other ordinances, there's some other ordinance uh, adjustments that will go along with the fee structure changes. Next steps and questions. The calculation of the methodology uh, was approved by your board in 2012. And in a nutshell, what it does is it takes the future of all infrastructure costs and it divides by the number of acres of, of development that that infrastructure will accommodate. So effectively what that does is gives you the dollar amount per acre. Um, and it is net acreage, which is important as we go forward um, as part of the calculation. There are uh, two areas, as I was just mentioning, relief and expansion. And relief area, that's area that pr primarily is already developed and there's already infrastructure in place and occasionally we need to expand that infrastructure. So there's additional uh, costs associated with the expansions and that's what that uh, fee uh, captures. And that relief area fee is actually revenue that comes in and reimburses SASD for those costs. SASD is the, is the primary developer of those types of, of infrastructure costs. So that stays with uh, SASD. The expansion, as, as Christoph was mentioning, is uh, a fee where we receive funding and, and that is used to reimburse developers. Um, you'll, you'll see occasionally a, a developer reimbursement agreement come to your board and that is when a developer has created a, an infrastructure that they will be reimbursed for, a, a trunk system. And when that agreement gets in place, we, we build a list of developers and the developer impact fee or the uh, in expansion area impact fees go towards paying off those developers. They're paid off sequentially one at a time as, as the revenue comes in and we pay off the, the, the last uh, developer, we go to the next developer and, and continue to pay them off as time goes on. The system capacity plan is the document and study that, that does the projection of infrastructure costs. We most recently did one in 2020, and that's the nature of some of the fee adjustments that are happening here today. Uh, the SCP had some adjustments to what our forecasts were for infrastructure costs and also the, the developable acreage. One of the other things, uh, and I'll get to that in a second. And then the other thing that, uh, that, that uh, fees increase by, if not for the SCP, the system capacity plan, fees are adjusted primarily by inflation. So as I mentioned, there were some adjustments in the SCP uh, for the relief area, not much in the way of change. The, the infrastructure costs didn't change much, the acreage didn't change much, and in fact, what we'll see as I, I share the next slide, the relief area actually kind of levels off. It doesn't uh, continue on a, on a trajectory that it was before. It, it's actually kind of a lesser increase. It is an increase, but not much. On the expansion side, there was additional costs associated with infrastructure that's accounted for in the new SCP. And then one of the other things that's important that happened this time uh, as we were studying the, the fees for this uh, three-year uh, fee extension uh, increase was that there we did not properly really account for open area. That means uh, roads, walk paths, parks. When we were looking at uh, undeveloped areas or areas that don't have develop, development plans on them, uh, we were not accounting for the fact that not all of the acreage in those areas are going to produce fee revenue. So that has caused a little bit of an, an adjustment to the fee structure. And you'll see those in the, in the next slide. <clears throat> Excuse me, Dave, I'm sorry. Is that why the, the net acre discussion becomes important for that very reason? Are yes. You, okay, I'm going to so get it in yeah, and, here. And, in the ordinance, you'll see it, it is written in the, in the fee schedule that the dollar amounts are per net acres, and that net acreage is without roads and parks and walk paths and drainage ditches and other things that, that are not uh, revenue generating acreage. So you'll see this is uh, in your, your board item. The, um, 
the relief area as it stands right now is at 4664. Uh, the next three years, it really only increases about a, about a percent, not much of an increase, uh, actually less than what we have in the past, just, just accounting for um, inflation. Uh, the expansion side, though, is substantially more, uh, and it is just the three years that this adjustment is being taken into account. The, the uh, the open space, what we call an open space factor, this, this uh, effort to, to recognize the net acres is captured in these three years predominantly. So there's a fairly sub significant increase in fees over the next three years, about eight to 9% per year. We did some outreach. We uh, contacted the Building Industry Association and had a couple of meetings with them. In fact, went as far as sharing our revenue model with them. They were actually pretty impressed by what we have in our revenue model. It's a fairly sophisticated model that we use to calculate fees. Um, they you know, clearly were not happy about fee increases, as you wouldn't expect them to be. And, uh, but ultimately, they were accepting to the fees that we were proposing. Uh, upon after this meeting, we will be sending out notices to uh, interested parties there in local jurisdictions uh, regarding the fee increase. And then we also have uh, an online um, website that we will be posting those proposed fee increases. SACSewer.com. So with the fee adjustments, there are, it is an ordinance adjustments, and while we're at it, there are other uh, ordinances that will be adjusted. Um, we have some small adjustments to our relief and, and expansion area map. Uh, some of those are boundary adjustments. Uh, the city of Sacramento had, had an annexation, so there's a change to that. Otherwise, pretty much the map adjustments are line weight and other uh, minor modifications to the map. We have updates to the, the cost schedule for sewer construction. This is the cost schedule that we use to estimate projects and is part of what we use to establish developer reimbursement agreements. So that is changed to account for inflation. And then we had some minor updates to definitions primarily associated with the master interagency agreement that we have just executed. So next steps, uh, today we're introducing the ordinance amendments. Uh, after this meeting, we'll be advertising for a hearing that will be held on April 27th. Uh, at the April 27th board meeting, we'll bring this item back for board adoption of the ordinance amendments. And then the impact fee adjustments uh, will take effect on July 1st. And with that, any questions? Okay, thank you, Dave. Mm -hmm. Any uh, questions or comments from directors? Do you see any? I do not see any one with their hands raised in Zoom. Okay, appreciate the presentation. How about any, any public you. comments on we did this not, item? We have not received any public comments. Okay, bring it back to the board. Again, seeing no, uh, I don't see any directors queued up, their hands raised. Then uh, I'll entertain a motion then, this item. I'll move it. Director Howell moves. Holy seconds. And Director Natoli seconds. Okay, Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Member Bruins? Aye. Natoli? Aye. Howell? Yes. Cerna? Aye. Vang? Yes. Sander? Aye. Frost? Aye. And Desmond. Aye. And the motion carries with those members present. Okay, thank you. Uh, the other matter, items we have are receive and file. Um, any closing comments from directors? If not, boy, we're pretty close to the estimate of 10-10 uh, to finish the meeting. I, I, gotta, I gotta say, <laughs> Christoph, that's pretty good. I just wanted to say I got a pop-up ad for, um, for uh, SRCS, uh, excuse me, for um, SASD on my phone, and it was. I thought it was well done. Thank you, Director Al. Okay, well, there being no further business, then I will adjourn the meeting at 10.06 uh, a.m. Thank you. Thank you all.